President Joe Biden dropping out of the presidential race with the elections right around the corner now. There are so many questions about how the Democrats will navigate this shift. And here to catch us up on what we need to know and break down what might happen next is our very own Mike Muse. Thank you so much for being with us. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> yeah, it's a busy Monday, right? Busy. Okay, so President Biden has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris to be the Democratic nominee. But this is all so completely mm -hmm. unprecedented. I heard John Carl this morning refer to it as Shakespearean. Yeah. So what happens next? He couldn't have said it better with the word Shakespearean because that's what it is, Shakespearean. And it's also dynamic. It's forever changing. So what we're about to report now could change in another hour. Um, but the most important thing to note is to back into it is the important date for this week is going to be Wednesday. Um, and Wednesday, the Democratic National Committee is going to have their rules committee where they're going to determine what is going to be the nominating process. As of now, there have been a couple of things being bantered about. Uh, one could be, do we do a mini, the Democrats do a mini primary contest uh, where they actually do it at the convention floor? Uh, do they do small forums leading up uh, to the convention around the country, getting voters to know uh, these candidates? So that's one option. Uh, the the second option is, do these candidates who are vying for this position to be the Democratic nominee, do they begin to say, you know what, I don't want it anymore, I'm not in contention, I believe Vice President Kamala Harris is the one to lead our party, so then they begin to remove themselves from the nomination. If that's not the case, we could see an individual, one or two possibly, who could consider to contest Vice President Harris on the convention floor, which then we go into an open convention round. And then that is what the Democrats are doing their best to avoid, because that's when it gets tricky. Because on the first round, President Biden has already released his delegates and saying he is endorsing Harris. But they don't have to vote for Harris. And so let's say it is two people, it comes down to who can get the majority of those delegates on the first round to secure the minimum needed delegate count because what they want to avoid is if there is no clear front runner in the first round then you go to the second round the second round is when the super delegates can vote and that is a little bit of a controversial moment because the super delegates are elected officials uh, party leaders who can then add their influence to help the nom uh, potential candidate get the minimum nom uh, delegate nominees that they need to secure the nomination so then you have to ask yourself, what does that say to the 14 million people who vote in their primaries, right? Does it become undemocratic for them, or will they see that as a democratic process in order to unite the Democratic Party uh, moving forward? So it is logistically complicated. Yeah, very complicated. It's fascinating to watch all of this. But, you know, something I've been wondering, and I think a lot of people are wondering, what happens to all that money that was donated to the Biden campaign? Because now it's changed. Yes, Biden-Harris, Harris is still allegedly a part of it, if she is the Democratic nominee. But do we have any idea what happens to all that money that so many people donated? That's such a great question. And I think that is what a lot of potential contenders who may be thinking about challenging Vice President Harris is looking at right now. Because as it stands now, legally, if the Biden-Harris campaign, as long as Vice President Harris is at the top of the ticket, she still has access to the campaign cash and the campaign funds. Uh, the moment she is not on that ticket, then the Biden-Harris campaign has a couple of options. They can transfer the remaining money to the Democrat National Committee, or they can give it back to the donors, or they can turn into a super PAC. If they do turn into a super PAC, they can only allocate a certain amount of money to a candidate, and then the rest of it can be spent on uh, helping the other candidates win the race. But a couple of key numbers to really think about right now is that now it went from uh, the joint committee with the DNC with the Biden fund has now become uh, the Harris Victory Fund. So the DNC did an amendment for that. Gio and Eva, that's $40 million is in that bank account. The Harris Action Fund, that's $23 million in that bank account. And now the Biden-Harris campaign as of the end of May has $91 million in that account. So whoever will be mounting a contest against Vice President Harris has a financial upheaval going against that cash because they will have to start over at zero. And mm. legal scholars are really split on what mm. happens with it if it goes to court. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Mike, thank you so much.